Good morning, welcome to Ask Coffee Online. My name is Chef Cesar. Today I'm going to be making a uh, paella. This is a traditional dish from Spain, from Valencia, Spain. Some people consider this to be the national dish. And I got my paella pan. Uh, this is a special pan made for paella. You see these little indentations here? This is for even heat distribution. But if you don't have one of these, you can also use a big pan like this. I want to use a shallow pan. But if you want to go buy one of these, there's a way to start. To, you don't want to start cooking on this right away. You want to, you know, before you, you cook on this pan, you want to put some water here, put it on the fire and let it boil for about, you know, half an hour. Then you want to scrub it really good to kind of take, sometimes they put like oils in there to like uh, avoid the metal from getting, you know, like rusty. And then sometimes, you know, to put it away, you don't want to air dry this pan. If you buy one of these, they're not really that expensive. I only pay about $20 for this. And this is like the smallest one I have. So they have some really huge uh, paella pans, but this is, like I said, this is one of the smallest ones you can get. And uh, if you want to get one, just like I say, you know, you have to boil some water in it first, and then you want to wash it and scrub it really good. And you don't want to air dry this, because sometimes you might have a little scratch on the pan. It might get rusty. So you want, what do you want to do? You want to dry it with a paper towel, put some oil over it, you know, inside and the outside, and wrap it with some, some paper, and then put it away that way. That way you're going to be sure that it's going to keep really nice for the next time you use it. Now we're going to start our prepping our paella. I got some, uh, some chicken uh, ties here, like... These are boneless chicken ties. You can also use a uh, chicken breast. I got some uh, pork sausage. If you can't find uh, Spanish, like Spanish chorizo, you can find some pork sausage or kielbasa sausage. It works good too. I got some garlic. I got some clams, mussels over here, and all my ingredients. And one good ingredient you need to have saffron. This is uh, a must have in paella. This gives a nice earthy flavor. And this is uh, saffron, you know, I'm sure some of you already know it's very expensive. Because it takes about, you know, 75,000 flowers to make one pound of dry saffron. So you have to be also pick by hand. There's no machines to do this. That's why it's so expensive. You can, you know, pay up to $5,000 for one pound of saffron. So make sure to, you know, keep an eye and don't, don't waste it. But you need about one tablespoon for this. So let's start by uh, putting the paella together. I'm going to turn my uh, heat on here. And I'm going to add about a uh, couple of tablespoons of olive oil here. I'm just going to kind of go by eye here. I'm going to let it start to warm up. It smells wonderful. And uh, like I said, this is a uh, really easy dish to do. I'm using a short grain rice. Actually, I'm using arborio rice. This is the same rice I used to make risotto. So you have to be careful when you cook this. Uh, it's kind of, you know, with the liquid. And you don't want to, you know, cook it too fast because it gets mushy. So let's get going. Put my garlic in here. Start sauteing my garlic real quick here. And be careful, you don't want to burn it too much. So right now I'm gonna add my chicken. I'm using about four pieces of chicken cut up into pieces. You're gonna start to smell really good in here. I want to cook it for a few minutes before we add the rest of it. And I'm going to have the recipe that I'm making along with the video. So if you guys want to try to do this at home, feel free. This is a traditional uh, Spanish paella. You can also make it with just meats or uh, vegetables. There's only plain seafood. Today I'm, I'm doing like a traditional one. It has, you know, the chicken, the sausage, and also the seafood. But if you want to leave the, the meats out, it's okay. You can also use just plain seafood. You can add more seafood besides the one I got here. I got some uh, clams, some mussels, and some shrimp. You can also add some scallops, maybe some lobster tails. I mean, there's so many different kinds of uh, recipes out there. We got some breakfast paellas too. I want to add some of my sausage. I use about one, a uh, uh, couple pieces of sausage, a couple links. Wow.
I got over here some uh, some diced red peppers and onions, some green peas. I use some, I'm using some frozen peas. That's okay, unless you want to do fresh. But you know, frozen ones work good. Peppers. Got my frozen peas here. If they're frozen, that's okay. If you want to turn them out, that's great too, but you know, they work just as well. Because they're really tiny, so they're going to cook fast. I'm gonna add some of my uh, spices and herbs here. I got some uh, bay leaves, some fresh thyme, some uh, Spanish paprika, and my uh, saffron over here. This saffron is gonna give it a real nice yellow color to the rice. I can smell the paprika going in there. Nice smoky flavor. Now I'm gonna add my saffron. I'm gonna kind of crush it down a little bit. You can see your fingers kind of get yellow right away by just touching the saffron. And I got some uh, chopped tomatoes here. I got this in the can. You can buy them. You can do some fresh if you want, but. If you use a canned one, don't drain the juice. I got about a cup of tomatoes, the diced tomatoes. Okay. Now we're gonna cook this for a couple minutes here. Before we add our rice and our lemon juice. Make sure they have with some parsley. If you guys using a gas stove, it might be uh, quicker, so you want to keep it in medium heat. This one is electric one, so it takes a little longer to heat up. But again, once it gets going, it's just kind of, you know, it's going to work well. Now we've got uh, our rice here. It's got to go in there. We've got some uh, arborio rice. i got about three cups of arborio rice here. You can use it, uh, a different one, like a short grain rice, but I'm using this uh, a boiled rice, the same one that we use to make risotto. And I got my liquor already, my chicken stock already uh, hot over here. You want to make sure that the uh, chicken stock that's going to go in here is already hot before it goes in there. You don't want to boil, just uh, get it to a simmer, and then it's ready to go. Okay. As you can see this, I got all my ingredients in there. Now I'm going to add my mixture I have here, some... Uh, about a half a cup of lemon juice with some chopped parsley. Okay. You can see it's going to start to stick to the bottom right away. So we're going to add some liquid right now. And this is uh, more like a timing uh, game here. We have to wait for the seafood at the end because you don't want to, you know, overcook the seafood and then the rice be raw. So we're going to uh, keep an eye on this. 
And then a few minutes before the rice is completely done, we're going to add our seafood to the top. So, so okay, we're going to add some of this. I got about 48 ounces of uh, chicken stock in here. Okay, I'm not gonna add it all because I might need a little more later. Okay. This is like pretty much like cooking risotto, so we want to keep an eye on the liquid. Make sure you scrape the rice that got stuck to the bottom of the pan. As you can feel, it's kind of stuck. It's, you know, it feels crunchy, but that's just the rice that got stuck. Okay. It's going to take about 15 minutes to get done here. So for the rice to be nice and al dente, you don't want to overcook it either. So let's keep an eye on here. If you're using the electric stove, you want to kind of move it around so you get heat throughout the bottom of the pan because, you know, the heat element sits in the center. You can see it's just boiling in the center, so I want to kind of move it around so, you know, that way I get, the, you know, even heat distribution throughout the bottom of the pan. But if you're using a gas uh, stove, the flame is going to be much bigger, so this should be okay. You don't have to be doing this, but like I said, if you're using an electric stove, you want to kind of move it around so you kind of get heat throughout the whole bottom of the pan. So we're gonna let it go for about you know 15, 20 minutes, and then uh, at the end, right, just right before we take it out, about five minutes, we're gonna start adding the clams, the mussels, and the shrimp. I got some little neck clams here, and then I got some uh, black mussels. I'm using PI mussels; they're like nice and uh, sweet. The Prince Edward Island. There's bigger ones, but these are nice and sweet. They're uh, smaller ones, but the flavor is really beautiful. And you will see it starts to boil, so you want to kind of keep it, you know, in a uh, kind of slow boil. You don't want to get it too high in the heat, especially if you're using the gas stove. You can also throw this in the oven. If you got an oven, you might throw this in the oven and kind of, you know, time it. But that way you want to make sure you put the seafood uh, right before you're going to, you know, finish cooking the paella. Otherwise, you're going to overcook the seafood. But you can also finish this in the oven as well, too. But I'm just going to do it all the way on the top here. So you guys get to see because we want to make sure the chicken is cooked, you know, well. Spoon to make sure that... And you can taste the rice, you know, along the way, but maybe right now it's too soon. But once it gets to the end, you can take a little piece of rice again and try it to make sure it's, you know, cooked, you know, and off. Normally, if you're using a short grain rice, it's going to cook a little uh, quicker than, uh, than uh, arborio rice. This takes a little longer to cook, so it's a little harder grain. And so if you're using like a parboil rice, it's going to cook much quicker. Gonna let it go here for another ten minutes or so. And 
And once you've got the liquid going like this, you don't really have to keep steering this because it's not going to stick to the bottom, but you got to be careful. So you want to kind of, you know, keep the heat on me on medium low to kind of simmer really, you know, a slow rate. You can smell, you know, wonderful aromas coming from the paprika, the saffron, the garlic. This is a really, you know, popular dish. And like I said, they have some huge pans. I don't know if you ever seen, went to like a Spanish restaurant. I mean, sometimes they bring it outside like at the buffet. They have like a huge, you can probably fit up to 50 people in one, uh, one batch. So this, like I said, smaller one. But really, for home, you don't want to go any, you know, bigger than this. This is good enough. But, you know, especially when you go to the Spanish restaurants, they have like the huge amounts of uh, big, big pans that they use for this, and it's just really nice to see. I'm going to use my spoon here. As you can see, the rice start to change its color a little bit. It's beginning to, you know, swell up. I'm soaking up its liquid if you guys have any questions make sure you type them into the chat box today uh, because I'm going to be uh, remote answering your questions this uh, pre-recorded uh, video so make sure you go into the chat box and I will be uh, with you guys uh, answering all your questions as well tomorrow morning you kind of want to scrape the bottom of the pan so it doesn't you know use a metal spoon like this because my wood spoon wasn't working too well so this is uh, a better spoon to kind of you don't want the rice to stick to the bottom of the pan and burn. Okay. I'm going to add a little more liquid here because I, soon I want to add the rest of this, my seafood in there, my shellfish, my shrimp. And I got here some uh, shrimp with some shells on. I didn't take them off because when you use the shell, it gives her a better flavor because uh, usually you can use the shells to make stock. So, you know, this one is already clean, the vein, you can buy them like this. And uh, you just got, once you, you know, the cook, you just peel the shell off, comes really easy, and you just eat the, eat the flesh. But this is going to give a nice uh, flavor to the, to the sauce, too, the, to the, the whole dish. It's coming along really good. And you're going to find out there's a lot of recipes out there. Some, you know, they call for different vegetables, like some asparagus on top, some pimento peppers, you, the strips you put over the top. And I already got some red peppers in there, but, you know, whatever you want to do, they, they, process pretty much the same to prepare especially but if you're using just like plain seafood you wouldn't you know put the seafood right at the beginning so you would start like cooking the rice with the vegetables like I did right now and then at the end right before the rice is done you're gonna add the seafood otherwise you're gonna overcook the seafood and uh, I'm sure sure enough some of you already know that you know seafood is really you know easy to cook but at the same time you can overcook it really quick especially with shrimp and uh, mussels and pretty much all seafood is very delicate so you want to pretty much time yourself then you're gonna you know put all the shellfish and the seafood in there 
about four or five minutes before it's done, so it just uh, comes out perfect. And you don't want to put like uh, already pre-cooked seafood in there because some of the like the juices that come from the mussels and the clams they're gonna give a lot of it's gonna add up a lot of flavor to the to the to the paella then because as you know there's a lot of especially the clams have a lot of juice inside them then when they cook it's gonna release the juice it's gonna be real nice and tasty same thing with the mussels so try not to you know use uh, cook uh, seafood because you can find them cooked already but you know, just uh, use raw. It's much better. It's going to give you a much better, better flavor to your paella at the end. Yeah. Kind of taste the rice a little bit. Mm, it's good in there. A couple more minutes, I'm going to add the clams and the mussels and the shrimp. And since the clams take a little uh, longer to open up, I'm going to add those first. And then you can follow with the mussels and then the shrimp. Because, I mean, they cook really quick and we want to have a perfect cooked paella. You can see it smells really good in here. Almost ready to put the seafood in here. Okay. Put my clams in here. I'm just gonna kind of shove them in there. Okay. Kind of bury them in there. Let it the liquid. clams in there right now. In a couple more minutes, I'm going to add the mussels because the mussels are really tiny, so they're going to all cook really quick. And you see, this one's just already open, so when they're open like this, you don't want to use it. Sometimes they're resting like this, but if they close back up, they mean they're alive. Sometimes when you let them sit in the pan, like in the cooler, they kind of open up when they're resting. But as soon as you touch them, you tap them, they close the shells back up. That means they're alive. But when did like this one here, it's already, you know, open. You don't want to use it. This is, uh, it's already dead, so you want to, you know, pretty much uh, throw it away. And uh, make sure when you store mussels, you want to put them in a colander with some, uh, like a drain, uh, holes in the bottom, and you want to cover those with ice with like a, a pan underneath to catch the, the water. That way they're going to keep a little longer. The same thing for the clams. And you can also do that with shrimp. You know, you don't want to have seafood uh, uh, in the water, sitting in the water. It's going to just ruin it. Now I'm going to throw the mussels in there. I got about a pound of mussels, and because they're really tiny, sometimes when they're like you know bigger, they you know weigh more. But and they get different sizes too. You know these are like PIs, which means Prince Edward Island. The ones from the West Coast are much bigger, but the, the flavor is uh, I like this better. Okay. I'm gonna add a little more liquid here. Very little. 
Thick. Yeah. As you can see, the muscles open up really quick. So now I'm gonna add my shrimp here. Okay, shove them in there. Let's go all the way around the pan. This is starting to smell really good now. There you go. You can see some of these clams are already opened it up. So I'm just gonna cook this for a couple more minutes and then I'm gonna turn it down, shut it off, and we have to wait about 10 minutes before we serve this. We wanna make sure the rice soaks up all the liquid. We're gonna put a uh, towel over the top as you can see the shrimp start to cook right away they start to turn pink see you have to really keep steering this otherwise it's going to stick to the bottom okay make sure you bear the shrimp in there really good Rice a little bit more. Okay. Just gonna add the rest of the liquid here for the rice. to a boil one more time and then we're going to shut it off so it sits here and kind of rests and you can see the pan is pretty full so you don't want to do more than this because all the ingredients are going to pretty much once the rice is cooked it's going to absorb some of the liquid it's going to you know grow and puffed up so you're going to have a full pan this is a nice size pan for this recipe go for another two minutes so with uh, absorb some of the liquid then we're going to shut it off and let it rest for about 10 minutes before we actually you know serve it it's taking a little longer because uh the electric stove the hidden element's really small so it doesn't cover the whole bottom of the of the pan so i have to like kind of move it around so it kind of gets hot throughout it's only the center as you can see where it starts to boil but like I say, if you're using a gas stove, it's much quicker because the whole pan is going to be uh, hot throughout the bottom. So it's going to be more even heat than I got right here. Okay. You can see a few more minutes and then we're pretty much going to shut it off and I want some of this liquid to uh, absorb by the rice and some is going to evaporate. 
but we're getting there. At this point, I want to cover with a towel. I'm gonna shut it off, and this is gonna keep cooking. The heat from the carryover heat is gonna, you know, absorb all the liquid from the from the uh, stock. So we're gonna cover this, and 10 minutes later, we're gonna come back and uh, pretty much, you know, serve it. So when we come back, this is gonna be pretty much done. It's gonna be all absorbed. It's gonna be nice and dry. So in uh, 10 minutes, we're gonna open this up, and we're gonna serve this in a few minutes. Okay. Okay, now that we have uh, about 10 minutes or 8 minutes go by, we're going to take this cover off, and I want to show you what it looks like. Most of the liquid is, uh, you know, absorbed by the rice, and uh, we have a paella pretty much ready to go. And now we're going to plate it. It looks all the liquid's been absorbed, and you can see the mussels and the clams open up really good. I want to scoop it up there. You can see the rice is cooked really good. It smells wonderful. You can smell the saffron, you know, a little lemon. Okay, now we're going to garnish this with a little lemon wedge. Maybe a couple of them. Okay. And here we go. A nice, beautiful paella you guys can do at home. And this is a wonderful meal, like a family meal. Because you can see it's a big uh, recipe. You can fit about, you know, probably 10 people from this. And, uh, it's uh, the perfect size pan. I was kind of getting worried because it was getting pretty full, but this uh, recipe works well. And you can also use a different, you know, uh, pan at home that's uh, kind of shallow because you don't want to, you know, make jambalaya. You don't want to cook the rice and mix it up. The rice should be cooked kind of slowly. And uh, this is what it looks like at the end, uh, finished product. A nice, tasty paella. And uh, I mean, you can taste the risotto. A little bit of the lemon juice I got in there. All the spices. This is wonderful. I want to thank you for being here this morning. i see you next week. Uh, I think we're making some uh, Mexican-style uh, shrimp cocktail. Something really good. Thank you. Have a nice day.